Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather on this All Saints Day, remembering the saints that have gone before us. We ask you to keep in your prayers the family of Lois Taylor, who passed away this week. Please keep uh, their family in your prayers as they prepare for funeral arrangements uh, in the next few days. We gather this morning in a warm welcome to Mark and Carrie Harms and Courtney, Elena's parents and favorite sister. Yay! Welcome. We're grateful that you could uh, join us on this porch of community and faith and love toward others. So we're grateful to gather here with you. They're from Flanagan, Illinois, which is uh, north of Bloomington and a little, little east-ish. Is that? Somewhere in there. Yep, great. Well, we're grateful as we gather this morning. It is the first Sunday in November, and we like to acknowledge birthdays the first Sunday of the month. So if you have a birthday in the month of November, if you don't mind standing or waving, anybody celebrating? Yay, yay. Everybody, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yay. And anyone celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of November? Anyone? No. Oh. The Reinhardts, that's right, 50th anniversary. So we're grateful for the gathering. I think the boiler is telling us something. Happy anniversary, boiler. What is it? It's your 140th. The boiler's 140th <laughs> anniversary is coming up. That's what we're celebrating. We're grateful for that opportunity. This morning, our fellowship time will include a conversation with Kay Larrick, the recently retired executive director from Carpenter's Place. She'll be joining us after worship down in the fellowship hall. You're welcome uh, to join us for that time to gather. In two weeks, we are doing Christmas decorating, so if you'd like to gather after worship in, on, uh, what's today, the 6th, 13th, 20th, uh, you're welcome to join us after worship and uh, set up our Christmas decorations for the season uh, in a couple weeks. You'll see in your bulletin, or maybe not, but on the uh, table in the Narthex, poinsettia forms. So if you'd like to order poinsettias or give to the um, pro uh, noted programs on there, you're welcome to do so uh, as we prepare for Advent and Christmas. And the last thing, you still have a chance to order or, and sign up for the turkey baskets. They are $20 each. Uh, we donate about 160, I think we're ordering this year, for Zion Community, Patriots Community, and Blackhawk Courts Apartments Community Outreach through uh, Janice's work there. So please note if you'd like to donate uh, and dedicate those items. I invite you to stand and turn to your bulletin as we gather now and begin our All Saints Day worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who redeems us in Christ Jesus, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have ignored voices that call for your justice. We have neglected actions that witness to your righteousness. We have spoken and acted in ways that disrupt your beloved community. We truly repent of things we have done and left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Restore our troubled spirits so that we may live in newness, follow the way of the Spirit, and build up the body of Christ. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. God hears the prayers of all who cry out and restores us to life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We're pilgrims on the journey of a narrow road. Those gone before us line the way, cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary, their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace, surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us run the race, not only for the prize, but as those who've gone before us, let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on through godly lives. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. The footprints that we leave lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. After all our hopes and have come and gone, and our children sift through all we've left behind. May the clues that they discover and the memories they uncover become a light that leads them to the road we each must follow. Find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave lead them to believe. And the lives we live inspire them to obey.
Our first reading is from Daniel 7. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Word of God. Please read Psalm 149 responsively. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their rule. Let them praise their maker's name with dancing. Let them sing praise with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in the people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throat and a two-edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings in chains and their nobles with rings of iron. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Hallelujah. Our second reading is Ephesians 1. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God. words he 
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Friends, grace and peace to you this day, and blessings on your All Saints Sunday. We are grateful for the saints past and present who have been a witness to us and who now rest in heavenly glory. Thanks be to God, indeed. I'm especially grateful today for a few saints who have joined us for worship. Uh, They've been introduced already, but just to highlight again, my parents, Mark and Carrie, are here with us, and my sister, Courtney. Um, As an older sibling, it feels kind of weird calling Courtney a saint, but, you know... (laughs) If there's grace for me, though, Court, there's grace for you, too, and grace abundant. Thanks be to God that we're all sinners and saints together. As I thought about this day that we celebrate and reflected on these texts, one word kept coming back to me. Remember. It shows up most explicitly in the Ephesians reading, where it says that since the author heard about the community's faith in the Lord Jesus— and their love for all the saints, that this person never stops giving thanks for them as they remember them in prayer. And remembering the saints in story and in prayer is a natural part of our life together as followers of Jesus. It's a thread that's common with these other texts, even as it runs underneath them. It's a whisper that stirs in our heart from the Spirit, remember, remember. Oftentimes, as I mentioned, it comes in the form of stories, and I can't count the amount of stories that I've heard about Zion's saints while I've been here the past few months. From the tales of Ruthie Fairchild, her hats, and her lovely heart, to the legacy of Charmaine Logwood and her service for the neighborhood and passion for helping everyone around her. In my own life, I remember my grandpa Harms today who is perhaps the most mischievous saint that I've ever met. We still laugh about how he would always feel a sneeze coming on whenever we would build a domino tower. And it just happened to, you know, come right at the time that we built our tower highest to the top and it threatened to fall. 
And he also challenged us kids. It was like a rite of passage uh, to put our foot behind our head for a quarter. What's important to know about this story is he had a prosthetic leg, so when we failed, he would (laughs) pop it out, throw it behind his head, and show us up. Telling these holy stories is an act of remembrance, and in our remembering, we affirm and celebrate our connection to one another. In telling these stories, we recognize that all of our stories are wrapped up in God's story, and in loving, we are drawn together by the spirit of love. Not only this, beloved, but God in Christ remembers us just as we remember one another. Today's gospel lesson is a great example of this. You see, the world that surrounded Jesus' ministry was happy to forget entire groups of people. The whole social system was run on honor and shame, so only those who were rich and powerful or well-known were deemed worth remembering. Those who were poor, sick, or systemically left vulnerable, like slaves and women, were often cast aside and largely forgotten. Jesus, however, remembers the forgotten. He looks up at this large crowd gathered gathered to hear him and declares that he will share his coming kingdom with these ostracized, poor, hungry, grieving people. In this kingdom, he proclaims, the forgotten will be remembered. Sure, life and salvation will be offered to the rich and satisfied too, but in the end, they won't be remembered for their wealth or fame. And giving up these things to follow Jesus is bound to bring some woes. This is good news for the rich and the poor alike, because those remembered by God are remembered through the eyes of grace. And this proclamation rings true for our celebration today as well. God in Christ continues to remember us, especially in our struggle and in our suffering. And because the risen Christ is alive and at work among us, this remembering is not just an idle thought. It is a remembering that brings love and healing into our moment of need. It is a remembering that echoes our baptism joining us to Christ and clothing us with God's mercy and forgiveness. It is a remembering filled with Jesus' self-sacrificing love, because the same eyes that looked up at the crowd on the plain are the eyes that closed in death on the cross and then looked up again on Easter morning. This holy remembering comes to us and to all the saints because it comes from the one who transcends time and space. Therefore, whether we worship God here, from home, from a hospital bed, from a time of grief or uncertainty, or even from beyond the grave, we are not alone and we are not forgotten. God remembers us in love across all ages and remembers us as the body of Christ in every age. In Christ, we are freed from sin and death and freed to remember those that this world has forgotten. And on our last day, when death threatens to turn us into a memory, we'll plead like the criminal crucified next to Jesus. Lord Jesus, remember me. One last time, remember me as you come into your kingdom. And in that moment, we, like the saints who have gone on before us in the faith, will hear Jesus' words of promise. Today, I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. Amen.
Please stand if you're able. We gather now for this service of remembrance and dedication. As we gather, there'll be a time to light candles. Uh, you'll welcome also to uh, light the candles by the photos of those loved ones who've gone on before us from the past year, as well as others. We set aside this time to remember those who have gone on before us. They are forever with us. We gather to give God thanks and praise for all those who have died recently and in years past, they are forever with us. The ones who have gone before us show us the way of life that Christ has directed. They are forever with us. They are the saints beside us in a chorus of faith, singing with us as one great chorus of saints. Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, saints behind us from our past generation relatives, friends, and loved ones who worship with God in eternity, saints before us who worship God eternally. We give God thanks now for those members of Zion who have passed away since last All Saints Day. We remember Roger Schmidt, Karen Hobby, Mark Kalachi, Clifford Fields, Batty Anderson, Bill Drilling, Bert Swain, Dale Palmgren, Dorothy Erickson, Jean Fisher, Arnie Swenson, Ricky Legault Jr., Joan Lindstrom, Jeffrey Waters, Sharon Crenshaw, Hazel Drilling, Charmaine Logwood, 
Lois Taylor. We give God thanks also for those who have passed away on among us the chorus of saints, especially for those we speak out loud from the congregation. We sing with them at the river that flows forever. We sing forever with them. We give you thanks, O God, for this community of saints, for we are among the baptized who gather throughout the world and throughout time. We praise you for the communion of saints. To God be the glory. We pray for your church wherever it gathers, that we may proclaim the good news of your grace and mercy. Thanks be to God. We pray for those who are dear to us, who long for healing of body, mind, and spirit, especially those who we speak out loud now or silently say to ourselves. God of mercy, hear our prayers. Friends in Christ, we have come together also today to dedicate these gifts for the ministry at and beyond Zion. From this day forward, let these items be dedicated to God's glory, including all creation's music songbooks, our pastoral intern scholarship funds, our pastoral intern alb and clerics. Let it be known that these gifts are dedicated in order that we would be a mosaic community sharing the grace of Christ with all. To God be the glory. Let us proclaim our faith in God through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hear us, O Lord, in this time of prayer that we may be healed, released, and comforted in all suffering and struggles. Drive away suffering and strengthen us to trust in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time you may light candles and sing or sit in your chair as we gather now for a time of prayer.
God's grace and mercy brings us healing. May the healing balm of forgiveness guide you to surrender your will to the Holy One. The name given to us for health and mercy is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves now for our meal here or at home as we sing the song, Shall We Gather at the River? gather with the saints for this meal, the celebration of the communion of saints, of God's grace and mercy. Prepare yourselves as we gather now for Holy Communion, as we remember God's grace and mercy through this meal. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. The night in which Jesus was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. (laughs) 
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table in this meal, we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us sing our blessing. As you go on your way, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you. Above you to watch over, beside you to befriend you, within you to give you peace. Amen. Let us stand as we sing our sending song, When the Saints Go Marching In. <laughs> Peace, serve the Lord. Show 